Week 4, Day 1. Morning Nourishment. Philippians 1 19-21 For I know that for me this will turn out to salvation through your petition and the bountiful supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectation and hope that in nothing I will be put to shame, but with all boldness, as always, even now Christ will be magnified in my body, whether through life or through death. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. The salvation in Philippians 1 19 is the working out of the salvation in 2 12, it means to be sustained and strengthened to live and magnify Christ, this requires the bountiful supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. This, petition, is the supply of the body of Christ, the Church. Imprisonment did not isolate Paul from the body of Christ or cut him off from the supply of the body. Today's reading. Philippians 1 18-21 is one sentence. In verse 18 Paul says, What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truthfulness, Christ is announced, and in this I rejoice, yes, and I will rejoice. Verse 19 begins with the word for. This indicates that verse 19 is an explanation of verse 18. The word this, in verse 19, refers to the different preachings of Christ mentioned by Paul in the foregoing verses. Through the petition of the saints and the bountiful supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, Paul knew that these different preachings would turn out to salvation. Then verse 20 opens with the words according to my earnest expectation and hope. This phrase modifies salvation in verse 19. With a full hope, Paul expected to enjoy salvation. Verse 20 indicates that the salvation Paul expected to enjoy was that in nothing he would be put to shame, but that with all boldness, as always, Christ would be magnified in his body. When Paul wrote to the Philippians, he was in prison in a foreign country, far away from his homeland. Paul had good reason to worry and be sad. Since his circumstances were so difficult, he could have easily wept about his situation. If he had wept, instead of rejoiced, he would not have experienced salvation in that environment. Suppose you were a Jew held captive in a Roman prison. Would you have rejoiced? Instead of weeping, Paul rejoiced in the Lord. For him, everything that happened turned out to salvation. According to the context of these verses, salvation means that Paul was not put to shame in anything. Not only did he not feel shameful, but nothing caused him to be put to shame. Christ was magnified in Paul's body. This magnification of Christ, spoken of in verse 20, is the very salvation mentioned in verse 19. This means that the salvation which was according to Paul's earnest expectation and hope was that he would not be put to shame but would magnify Christ in his body. Therefore, in verse 20 we have a definition of the practical enjoyment of salvation. To enjoy this kind of salvation is to live Christ. This is the reason Paul says in verse 21, For to me, to live is Christ. Paul's sufferings did not put him to shame. Instead, they afforded him an opportunity to magnify Christ. If we experience the salvation mentioned in these verses, then when we undergo suffering, we shall magnify Christ and not be put to shame. But if we are defeated by suffering, suppressed by it, and filled with worry, we shall be put to shame. But if we magnify Christ in sufferings, we shall experience this salvation. The key to Paul's experience of salvation was the bountiful supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Everything that happened to Paul turned out to salvation through this bountiful supply. Actually, in our experience, salvation, Christ, and the bountiful supply of the Spirit are one. But if we would enjoy Christ and experience Him as our salvation in every circumstance, we need the bountiful supply of the Spirit. Just as this Spirit dwelt in the Apostle Paul during his imprisonment, He also dwells within us today. Through the supply of such a spirit, Paul enjoyed salvation.